We now come to ordinances to be read for the second time. Councillor Hobbs. Ordinance 10, uh, an ordinance amending Chapter 47 of the Duluth City Code by adding a new article, 5, relating to transportation network companies and amending Section 4716 to exclude transportation network company vehicles from the definition of taxi cab. And we do have a number of speakers on this item. We will start with Caroline Ormond. Oh, Welcome, Ms. Ormond. And if it's too high, you, there's that button on your right-hand side. Hi, I'm calling on behalf of a concerned citizen about Uber coming into Duluth and you're giving a permit for them to come in. I'm concerned that it will hurt our local cab companies that have been here for years. I've lived here a long, long time, taken cabs. I don't know anyone who owns a cab or a cab drivers. I'm just a concerned citizen and want you to please give consideration to how this will hurt them. At the very least, will you please table it for a while? Because maybe a lot of us would put our names on a petition to let you know that we care about our small business, which happens to be one of them is the taxi cabs. Please give them as much consideration as you can because their lives, their livelihoods lies in your what you do to them might make or break their company and their jobs. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Ormond. Our next speaker is Celia Shear. Good evening, and thanks for hearing me. Um, I just want to let you know how important this is to me. I am a cab driver. Um, but today is my son's birthday. One year ago, he died of a heroin overdose. I would really like to talk about all that, but this is way more important. Six years ago, I was the, um, the head graphic designer and office manager at a print shop. We were making bank. The lowest paid person in our office made $12 an hour, and that's the guy who boxed up the orders. But the city of Duluth micromanaged him right out of town. Now he lives in a friendlier state. And I'm just wondering if you guys are going to micromanage my current boss right out of town. Now, I have nothing against Uber. For me, it's just it's a transportation company. That's exactly what I am, a transportation company. We should have to follow the same rules. We should have a level playing field. They provide the same service. Think of McDonald's. They provide food. You know, Red Lobster provides food. They follow the same rules, even though they're entirely different. I think you guys also need to think of the unintended consequences. I don't think that often occurs to you. What will happen if transportation companies are removed from the rules? That's actually ultimately going to hurt your bottom line because taxi cab companies are going to decide now they are transportation networks as well. And they can drive around without signs, without you know the inspections and the medallions, and they'll self-regulate just like Uber would self-regulate. Again, I'm not against Uber. If there's a better way, we should do it. They didn't stop refrigerators from being made because ice delivery men would be out of work. So I'm not really saying don't put me out of work because if you do this, what's, I'm just telling you, I'll probably end up being an Uber driver. And so will all the other taxi drivers. And there goes your medallion fees. So anyway, I would just like to you guys to consider that. Thank you. Our next speaker is Marlon Bailey. Welcome, Mr. Bailey. I've been a cab driver probably longer than anybody in this room, 18 years. Started my own company about 10 years ago, Airport in Duluth Taxi. I was back when you guys deregulated everything, not this particular council, but the council back then, even Mayor Ness was against deregulation. What happened after that was we went from 35 taxis to 130. Basically, all of us as of today are having a hard time making ends meet. Uh, Duluth is 86,000 people 10 years ago, and they're 86,000 people today. And we can't support 130 taxi cabs, let alone anybody else coming in like Uber, 
Shuttles from hotels take a lot of business away from the taxis. On Friday and Saturday night, they zoom around town and collect what they can. So we're already competing against shuttles. Uh, it's only five hours a week that we can't take care of the public. Friday night, two and a half hours. Saturday night, two and a half hours. The rest of the week, we're starving. I made $11 on Saturday, 11 and that was a $10 charge, and I took home one buck, and my business is good. I got a five-star rating, been at the airport for 20 years, and we all, there ain't that many customers coming through the airport even. Like Sunday, I was with the airport, a couple drivers there, we all got skunked. Now, if you bring an Uber... One thing, I don't think they're going to make it. I don't know how many drivers they think they're bringing in, 20 to 50, whatever. I don't think they're going to find that many drivers in Duluth that have legal licenses and cars good enough to drive. And they're not going to be experienced. We're all experienced. What's a 19-year-old kid from college going to do on a Friday night driving for Uber? Call the cops every 10 minutes? They put all us out of business. That's what you're going to be left with. 20 to 50 Uber drivers who don't know what they're doing. We're not coming back if we go out of business. Something to think about. An Uber is not 24-7. They might say they are, but they're not. We're here 24-7. <coughs> We're barely making it right now with this many cabs on the road. It takes us two months our inspections are due in January. It takes us till March to complete that period because we don't have the money to go through the inspections. And if you let Uber in here with no inspections, no medallion fees, no airport fees, what kind of playing field is that? Just be careful because if we all go out of business, you'll be left with Uber and they can't compete with us. We know what we're doing. All I got to say. Thank you, Mr. Bailey. Our last speaker um, is Dean, and I'm sorry I cannot read your last name. If you can let us know for the record your name. <clears throat> Dean Hansen. Thank you. Uh, thank you to President Cypress and the City Council for hearing us. Um, you know, I, op I operate Yellowdoor Taxi. We're just a small homegrown town. We're just a small homegrown business here in town. And um, uh, I hear a lot of things on the news about Uber and the city council trying to make it a level playing field for everybody. And, you know, my biggest concern is if they're a transportation company, I'm a transportation company, what could possibly be more fair than the same regulations for the same job? Allowing them to have a $1,500 to $2,000 or what's not even set yet, blanket fee for however many vehicles they want to have in. I personally play paid more than that. $1,500. I personally paid more than that just for my cars. To allow a competition to come in, undercut me, not have the same amount of regulations, I don't really know what you expect is going to happen. Me and all my drivers, we're going to be out of business. I'm telling you that right now. It's not, um, we can't compete with, with Uber as far as um, they're, they're operating at lower expenses, so sure they can op have cheaper rides. It just goes on and on. Um, I would just urge that you reconsider and think think about it. The way the the way the ordinance is set up now, you're allowing loopholes, a lot of loopholes for uh, existing taxi companies to operate illegal taxis now. They're going to be bringing in illegal taxis. You're going to have the original taxis, Uber, and then a fleet of illegal taxis because of the loopholes provided where there's a gray area in between. Are they a taxi? Are they a ride share? You know, it's it's going to open up a big can of worms, and um, I, I, I don't know. I would just hope that we could avoid that, basically. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Hobbs, your microphone is still on if you wish to comment. Sure, and uh, thanks for sharing your concerns. Um, I think there's really two different options that we could have done uh, with, with this. We could have regulated and said no not to have these industries uh, here and operating in Duluth we could have 
not regulated them at all uh, in the case of San Cloud and Mankato, and you have transportation network companies operating with zero fees, zero inspections, no quality of safety for um, riders, um, and that's a significant uh, advantage uh, over their traditional established cab industries uh, there. We could have certainly said uh, no, but it is something that uh, probably would have operated here um, if we weren't going through this process and finding that middle ground to create a uh, fair level playing field. And so um, we're requiring background checks. Uh, TNC cars have to be uh, four years younger than our cabs have to be. Um, we have uh, inspections. that's uh, been there from the beginning by an ASC certified mechanic. Uh, and we've worked really diligently, uh, Attorney LeCousier, uh, myself, Cha Vang, and Jeff Cox have put in a, a lot of work to make sure that we do have this level playing field so it's not tilted one way uh, or the other. Um, so there's no unfair uh, competitive advantage one way uh, for a TNC or one way for, uh, for a traditional cab. Um, you know, that being said, uh, I've certainly had a lot of feedback uh, from customers and or uh, constituents, and they have been, you know, wondering when it's going to show up. And I think we've done our due dil diligence to make sure that we have a level playing field, um, ensuring that we aren't having an unlevel uh, playing field advantage to where we do put a significant strain on our cab companies. Um, and how do we regulate uh, an entity that is, in fact, different? Uh, the state of Minnesota has ruled that it is, as have other states. Um, and we've taken that into account. There's a different insurance requirement that's significantly higher than we require as a city uh, through, through the state. Um, and the significant difference is, is that uh, cabs uh, own uh, the cabs or lease to an employee, and, and they have control over that cab, and they have control over uh, their employee. Where a TNC, uh, it's a personal vehicle that's used 90% uh, of the time as a personal vehicle, uh, and 10% of the time uh, on, on, a, on a platform. And so there is a significant difference uh, in that. So to take from Mr. Montgomery, it is apple to grapefruit when it comes to how that does operate. And there are different uh, insurance requirements uh, accordingly, both when there is a rider in the car on a TNC and also when the driver is no longer in their personal vehicle and they're on the clock uh, per se. And so uh, having addressed those, uh, if, if other counselors have comments or Anything? Councillor Russ. Thank you, President Cypress. Um, I really appreciate the comments that have been made and the concerns that people have about their own business and how it's going to be affected by this. Um, I would be surprised if their your, uh, taxis would go out of business because of this, maybe over a long period of time. But um, myself, um, I would first try to ca call a cab if I needed a cab, and I use cabs to go back and forth to the airport uh, now and then, and I appreciate that, and I've gotten good service with that. Um, other than that, I would rarely need a taxi or any other form of uh, transportation because I have a car. Um, I really think that in Duluth, um, given the population that we have, I think there's a lot of people, especially people older like myself that would be more comfortable continuing taxi cabs when they need one. So I think that's still a, that's a very important service that we have here in Duluth, and I hope that it will continue. I certainly hope that this doesn't mean that we are not going to have taxi cabs in a matter of months or a couple of years. Um, because it's a different, it really is a different kind of service. And I know a lot of people um, like myself who have parents who are um, elderly and we would prefer that they not drive anymore, and um, we would rather instead have a contract with one of the cab companies to be available when when our you know parents need to get here and there, uh, so that they don't have to drive themselves. So I just think that it's it's a different service and it's a very important service. So I would be very disappointed if we did lose your business and, and you lost your own you know livelihood. Um, so. I've used Uber myself when I've been in larger cities, especially Washington, D.C. It's a very easy way to get around Washington, D.C. And um, if you don't have, um, if you're not staying in a big hotel there that can get a cab for you really quickly, Uber does it very easily. Um, so I, I, I don't think it's going to be... Um, I don't think there's going to be the, the impact and the effect that many of you are concerned about. I hope, I'm, I hope that I'm right about that. Um, and 
maybe we'll be back here in a matter of months or a couple years or whatever uh, because we find that there is um, some, th some changes we need to make as far as um, what the rules are for everybody so that everybody can continue with their livelihood and um, everybody can um, also um, you know, have, have Uber or Lyft or whatever we're going to end up with um, when they want that. Um, I, I get a few complaints about people uh, saying, again, uh, on the weekends, like you say, that's your busy, busy time um, when the bar is closed, um, that they, there aren't enough taxis to take care of the business that um, is available at those times. So maybe this will at least you know, relieve a little bit of that pressure. But um, I'm going to support this um, and uh, tonight. And if it, if it passes, I just hope that we can all um, just uh, sort of sit back and wait and see what happens. Um, I think that you're, again, I just think you're, the, the taxi um, companies are going to stay in business. They're needed. It's important. And it's, I think it's really a very different service. Councillor Filipovich. Thank you. Uh, thank you, President Cypress, and thank you uh, to the speakers who came, and um, I'm sure there's other folks in the audience who did not speak on, on this issue. <clears throat> um, you know, I, I, the, the, this is kind of a big thing, and it's not just Uber and, and Lyft and, and um, transportation network companies. This is part of uh, a kind of a new phenomenon called the sharing economy or the new economy going on. You know, this council has talked about Airbnb and vacation rentals um, and put new rules around those. Um, there are other uh, services that are, um, some might say, more Internet-based um, in, in how you market those, and, and um, transportation network companies are, are a part of that. Um, and I think uh, government, including Duluth, is having, is having uh, conversations like like we're having tonight and, and previously um, around this um, you know, this specific ordinance I will be voting in favor of it but I do have some concerns I am concerned about uh, some of the effects that we have heard uh, from taxi um, drivers and owners tonight and and what the effect will be on taxi companies um, one concern that I have is a significant portion um, of fares uh, that people will pay go to uh, to the kind of um, the uh, larger company of Uber or Lyft or whatever it might be, um, and for Uber I think it's 25 percent, and that's dollar. Those are dollars that are going um, outside of Duluth. I'm concerned about, and we've gotten emails about this regarding employee status, and there's um, there are conversations happening around the country around employee status of, of Uber and Lyft. Um, I, I do hope that uh, um, that those impacts, uh, those negative impacts to our community and to our local cab companies are going to be minimal. Um, and if and if they're not, we can come back, take another look, and modify uh, the ordinance, the ordinance language. Um, myself, I've never actually used an Uber, um, and when I'm in Duluth, I always, uh, if I need a taxi, I will. Uh, do to the best of my ability um, call up one of the single person taxis, which there are uh, a number of, um, and uh, you know I'm I'm going to uh, continue to do, to use those local cab companies um, in Duluth. So um, again, I'm going to to support this, and if we need to come back and take another look, um, we certainly can do that. Um, and I'm going to be watchful and mindful of of this issue and the other. Um, kind of new or shared economy um, entities or, or um, options for folks as we move forward. I think, uh, you know, we're, we're going to have to look at a, at a, at a number of other things, both again, um, coming back to this council this year um, in regards to vacation rental and dwelling units. But um, so this might be another one of those where we're going to have to make tweaks uh, throughout. And um, I think that's what we are here to do. Um, as as a council, so thank you very much, Councillor H. Hansen. Uh, thank you, uh, President um, Cypress. Um, I don't want to buy the argument that the cab companies are going to go out of business and do this increase in competition. 
this is really an opportunity for the cab companies to get better and to continually improve their product, uh, as they should. In fact, the, uh, the Internet has created fierce competition for, for most businesses, including but not limited to retail, education, health care, publishing, you name it. So again, the, the, um, you know, this, is a, this is a sign of the times that the impact that the Internet has had um, our responsibility here is to be reactive, and and I think we've, uh, we've our, uh, the author of this, Mr. Hobbs, has uh, done tremendous due diligence here, and um, and I and I'm uh, gleefully going to uh, support this ordinance. Um, I'll, I'll say a few words about this, and I'll start by saying that over the course of the discussion of this issue, I've developed a little bit of a reputation for being anti Uber. And I will say, even before this issue came up on this council, I developed a reputation in my family for being anti-Uber. Um, and I've got serious concerns with Uber's business practices. Um, I'm concerned with their history of resisting appropriate government regulation. Um, I'm concerned with their practice of flooding markets with too many drivers, which makes it difficult for any driver to earn a living. I think that's a legitimate, real fear. Um, I'm really concerned with the fact that their entire business model is based on treating employees as independent contractors, which allows them to evade federal labor law. Um, that's not unique to Uber. It's not unique to this industry. That is rampant in a lot of industries in this country. And in fact, um, Senator Sherrod Brown of uh, Ohio is proposing that there be federal legislation to crack down on companies that treat people who truly are employees as if they're independent contractors. Um, so I've got a lot of concerns about Uber. Um, but it also became really clear to me early on in this process that there was a strong desire in this community for Uber to come here. And it was also clear to me that there was a majority of this council that was inclined to bring Uber here. So. The, the, the stance I took was that rather than try to keep them out and fight them, because I think that's a losing battle, um, I devoted myself to trying to take the concerns I was hearing from drivers, from cab operators, and to raise those questions, to raise them with Councillor Hobbs, with Mr. Montgomery, with the airport, to try to make sure that to the best of our ability we got those issues addressed to have the most level playing field possible. And I, and I want to thank Councillor Hobbs for being responsive to my questions and my concerns. I agree, this does not establish a 100% level playing field. The most obvious example is the issue of the licensing fees on a per vehicle basis is lower for TNCs. Um, there's also the issue that TNCs vehicles will be able to be inspected at many different garages and not just at the ones that are designated for taxi cabs. Uh, but on some of the most important issues, we have the requirement in this ordinance for insurance, um, which was absolutely vital. We have the requirement in this ordinance for um, uh, condition of the vehicle, which is important. Um, the concern was raised at the airport. Both Councillor Hobbs and I communicated directly with the airport director, and they've shared with us that their intent at the airport is to establish a standard fee that would apply both to TNC vehicles and a taxi cab. So they're taking the approach of establishing a level playing field at the airport. Um, I was concerned that if we adopted this ordinance before the airport had their new rules, it would create a period of time where anything went at the airport where TNCs could go up there without any regulation or fee at all. We received assurances today, and again, Councillor Hobbs worked on this. We, we received assurances from the airport that, they that if we adopt this tonight, they will move as quickly as they can to get their new fee structure in place that will apply equally to both traditional cabs and, and TNC vehicles. And at most, we'll only have a very short window um, in which there might, ours might go into effect when theirs haven't yet. We're, and, and we were told a matter of days might be that window. Um, one of my big concerns was um, how we'll be able to enforce this because under this ordinance, we're not going to directly keep records of 
the vehicles and the inspections. That will be kept by the TNCs, the TNC companies, and then the city will audit that. And so um, I asked Mr. Montgomery um, if he had some feedback and some thoughts on how the city is going to make sure that companies like Uber actually follow the rules in this ordinance and what we as a city are going to do. We had a very good conversation this afternoon, and I'm wondering if Mr. Montgomery would mind sharing a little bit about exactly how the city is going to go about making sure that the rules in this ordinance are actually followed by those companies. Thank you, um, President Cypress and Councilors. Uh, I spent a fair amount of time Friday and also today working through the ordinance and working through with Chavang and Jeff Cox and others that are currently involved in our regulatory process. From the city's perspective, the way we're looking at this is whatever type of transportation company, whether it's a cab or, or a TNC, what is the city concerned about? We're concerned about the safety of the vehicle. Is it safe? Is it operable? Is it maintained in a safe operating condition? Secondly, are the drivers insured? Is there appropriate insurance on the vehicle? We have those requirements for cabs. This ordinance clearly has those requirements, and in fact, they're stronger uh, on the insurance side uh, for the TNCs. And then lastly, do we have uh, you know, our, do we have qualified drivers, licensed drivers, et cetera? Uh, beyond that, it's sort of the business model of each, whether it's a cab or a TNC, to operate as they see fit. Uh, we obviously have complaint issues that we deal with from both cab passengers and we will also have TNC passengers, I'm sure, passing on complaints, regardless if there's a self reporting process in either the cab companies or the TNCs. So those were the items that we felt beyond those, we couldn't think of other things that we really needed to focus on. The big one we've heard a bit about is, is the inspections, uh, and, and we'll touch on the fee later. Uh, on the inspections right now, every year when the cab company goes to get their license renewed annually, by year end or shortly thereafter, as one of the, the cab operators indicated, it takes them a while to get all their uh, cabs uh, inspected. They're required to have their cabs inspected. In, past, in, in the past, we've indicated two uh, garages to have that done. Uh, at the time, the thought was, I'm sure, that that allows you to have a certain inspection methodology in place. But there is a specific inspection list coordinated with the police department for those vehicles. Car goes in, gets inspected, gets signed off, and that inspection report has to be attached to the license request each year in order to get the license. The car has to be inspected. What we intend to do with, because it's a somewhat different model, uh, what we intend to do with the TNCs is on the application for their annual license renewal, and again, the, the method of that license renewal has not yet been determined by the council, uh, we will require an affirmative, uh, an affirmative acknowledgement by the TNC that all the cars are properly licensed, all the cars are properly inspected, and will retain so. If there's new cars that roll on during the year as they add drivers, that information has to be provided at the time. What we, so we have an affirmative affirmation that these cars have been inspected. What we will then do is we will decide on some random basis, depending on how many cars are out there, of saying, okay, let's pick 10 cars at random. Let, let's say we have 50 cars. We'll just pick a random numbers between 1 and 50 call a company and say, please provide us the actual inspection documents for these five cars, these ten cars. We want copies of the inspection documents. We want copies of affirmation of the insurance coverage. We, you know, in other words, show us the documents. Not just tell us that they are at that point, but actually send us the same you know, inspection report that they get for a cab. And we'll do that on a test basis on a sample basis. And depending on those results, as we continue to go and get no exceptions, we'll continue on that line. To the extent we start getting exceptions and we find that a vehicle in particular is not properly inspected, 
we'll tighten we'll tighten the requirements on providing that information and if it's and if it's not acceptable we may go to the same point of saying when you come to get your license please provide all the inspection reports at the time you apply uh, so we think we have the same coverage the same effect on the inspections the insurance is stronger here personal liability and auto insurance because the state mandates that not only does the drivers have their own coverages but the TNC itself has to provide an umbrella coverage over all of those coverages. But again, we will go through on that test basis and require to see, uh, you know, show us, show us the uh, proof of insurance statements you get from your drivers. And again, we will have on file the proof of insurance of the umbrella policy that covers everything. So we'll know that we have proper insurance. Uh, so those are the kinds of things we'll do. And we will tighten that as necessary based on the re based on the compliance we see but so long as they're in compliance and we see that they they are meeting all those requirements we feel that provides more than adequate coverage as far as our regulatory requirements go to make sure that those cars are being safely put on the street they are being properly insured and the drivers you know have been appropriately inspected with background checks etc thank you mr montgomery and, and just to conclude my, my remarks so um, I'm not going to pretend that this isn't going to have an impact on our local cab companies. I know it will. I don't think anyone knows how big an impact it will have, but I, it, I, I'm, I'm convinced it will have an impact. Um, I'm concerned about that. I'm concerned about the business practices. I could, for those reasons, vote no, and I might be one of the only one or two people to vote no, and it wouldn't accomplish anything. Um, but because Councillor Hobbs has been responsive to the concerns that I passed on as we try to make sure there's as level a playing field as possible because the airport has been responsive, because the city administration has been responsive. In order to sort of honor their work and their responsiveness to the, to the concerns that I and others have, um, I'll, I'll vote yes for this um, because, as I said, I think that this is a way of doing business that we're not going to be able to stop, and we need to make sure that we put as much constraints on it as we can and so I'll be voting yes tonight. Councillor Fosley. Thank you President Cypress. Uh, Mr. Montgomery on the random documentation <laughs> under the random documentation for the inspections um, is there a penalty in place if if they come back with no, uh, if they didn't get the inspection. President Cypress and Councillor Fazi, there is provision within this ordinance that we can uh, suspend their license. And the impact on that is potentially greater than, say, on a particular cab company with a particular vehicle, where we could pull that one vehicle. This suspension of license, which the rate hasn't been determined, I don't think, yet, but it's a single license over everything. They would lose their total license to operate anywhere in the city. Okay. Um, I, on the other hand, don't want to um, cause any businesses any harm, and uh, I'm going to be voting against this tonight for that reason alone. Um, I, my uncle owned uh, a bunch of cars for Allied and raised his family on that, and... Um, I'm hearing the voice concern of the cabbies, and I know how hard it is. Uh, you heard the one gentleman say he had a dollar, you know, one fare on a Wednesday night or whatever it was up at the airport. Um, it, it really isn't a, a fair playing field the way I'm seeing it and hearing it, and I don't want to hope that it works, and then we have to come back and revisit ordinances because, you know what, I've been on this council going on my third term, and I've heard them same words, and things have happened, and we don't come back. We just go, well, we're really sorry for the unintended consequence that we uh, put on your business or on your rental property or whatever it is that it's happened over the years. Um, so I, I'm going to be voting against this tonight. Seeing no other counselors in the queue, um, we will bring... Ordinance 10 to a vote. All in favor of Ordinance 10, please say aye. 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 
Any opposed? Uh, Ordinance 10 passes by vote of 7 to 1. Councillor Fosley opposed.